Bi Shu Chi Tong, Sutra Bi Shu Chi Tong, a native of Anfang in Shao Chou, had read the Langavatara Sutra over a thousand times, but still did not understand the three bodies and the four wisdoms. He made obeisance to the Master, seeking an explanation of the meaning. The Master said, The three bodies are the clear, pure Dharma body, which is your nature the perfect full reward body which is your wisdom and the hundred thousand myriad transformation bodies which are your conduct to speak of the three bodies as separate from your original nature is to have the bodies but not the wisdoms to remember that the three bodies have no self nature is to understand the four wisdom of body listen to my verse three bodies complete in your own self nature, when understood, become four wisdoms. While not apart from seeing and hearing, transcend them and, and ascend to the Buddha realm. I will now explain it for you. If you are attentive and faithful, you will never be deluded. Don't run outside in search of them by saying Bodhi to the end of your days. Chiritong asked further, May I hear? about the meaning of the four wisdoms. The master said, since you understand the three bodies, you should also understand the four wisdoms. Why do you ask again to speak of the four wisdoms as separate from the three bodies is to have wisdoms but not the bodies, in which case the wisdoms become non-wisdoms. He then spoke this verse. The wisdom of the great perfect mirror is your clear pure nature the wisdom of equal nature is a mind without disease wonderfully observing wisdom is a seeing without effort perfecting wisdom is the same as the perfect mirror five eight six seven effect and cause both turn merely useful names they are without the real nature if in the place of turning emotion is not kept you always and forever dwell in Naga concentration. Commentary Bishu Chu Tung studied the Nankavatara Sutra because Bodhidharma recommended it above all other texts for the Chen Gong. Although he had read it over a thousand times, he still had to ask the Master about the three bodies and the four wisdoms. The Master always teaches Dharma of and from self nature. The clear, pure Dharma body is your own original nature, he said, and the reward body is your wisdom. The transformation bodies are your conduct because you are what you do. You are transformed according to what you practice. If you try to explain the three bodies as something apart from the self nature, you have the bodies but not the wisdoms. But when you understand that the three bodies are devoid of self-nature, you possess the four wisdoms of body. When you understand that the three bodies are immanent in the self-nature, you realize the four wisdoms without being separated from the conditions of sight and hearing, you ascend directly to the Buddha realm. Now I have spoken this verse, the sixth Vajrak said, and you must truly believe it. Then you will never again be confused like those people who go around saying body, body, body all day long, but who never practice or understand body. Don't chatter head, mouth, zen. You must truly understand the three bodies for it to count. The master continued, since you understand the three bodies, you should understand the four wisdoms as well. If you try to explain the four wisdoms as something apart from the three bodies, then although you know the name four wisdoms, you do not possess their actual substance or know their function. Your wisdoms are non-wisdoms. The Buddha has four wisdoms. The wisdom of the great perfect mirror is the eighth consciousness. Alaya Vinaya Vinana when it has been transformed from consciousness into wisdom. The eighth consciousness is also called the store of consciousness.
because it stores up all the good and bad seeds you have planted in the past. All the good and bad things you have done in this and past lives. If you have planted good causes, you reap good effects. If you have planted bad causes, you reap bad effects. As the potential of all good and bad karma is stored in the eighth consciousness, it also comes to be called the field of the eighth consciousness because of whatever you plant in it, even through these sprouts. When you are unable to use it, it is merely consciousness. But when you return to the root and go back to the source, the eighth consciousness is transmuted into the great perfect mirror wisdom, which in its essence is pure and undefined. The wisdom of equal nature is the seventh consciousness when it has been transformed from consciousness into wisdom. Before you understand, it is the seventh consciousness. But once you are enlightened, it is the wisdom of equal nature. The seventh consciousness is also called the transmitting consciousness because it acts as a transmitter between the sixth and eighth consciousness. It is called the wisdom of equal nature. Because the minds of all Buddhas and living beings are equal when the latest consciousness have been transformed into wisdom. The mind without disease means that there is no obstruction, no jealousy, no greed, hate, or stupidity. Without these defilements, the seventh consciousness is transmuted into the wisdom of equal nature. The wonderful observing wisdom is the sixth consciousness when it has been transformed into wisdom. It is the wisdom of subtle observation, the sixth consciousness. What we think of as the ordinary mind is the consciousness of discrimination. It, discrim it discriminates good and evil, right and wrong, male and female. Such discrimination is not actually the work of intelligence as it seems to be, but is merely a kind of consciousness. When you turn it into wisdom, it becomes wonderfully observing wisdom, which sees all realms without having to go through the process of discrimination. This wonderful observation is quite different from mere discriminative thoughts. When certified our hearts wish to use the wonderful observing wisdom to know something, they must first sit quietly in meditation and intentionally observe for unless they intentionally observe their minds are no different from those of ordinary people. By intentionally observing, they can know the events of the past 80,000 ends. Perfecting wisdom comes from the transformation of the first five consciousnesses, eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body into wisdom. Five, eight, six, seven, effect, and cause both turn. The five consciousness and the eighth consciousness are transformed in the period of reaping effects and the sixth and seventh are transformed in the period of planting causes. In transforming the consciousnesses into the four wisdoms, first turn the sixth and seventh in the period of planting causes and next the eighth and five in the period of reaping effects. Merely useful names they are without real nature, although they are said to be changed in the realms of causes and effects. There is nothing in reality which corresponds to them. They are merely names and nothing more. If in the place of turning, emotion isn't kept. If in the place where your emotional feelings are being turned, you do not use your common mind and become caught up in the turning. You always and forever dwell in Naga concentration. At all times, you are in Naga Samadhi. Naga means dragon. Dragons can magically appear in big or small bodies because they have a great deal of concentration. As Far High tells us in his introduction to the Sutra, the sixth patriarch defeated the dragon by saying, if you are really a magic dragon, you should be able to appear in a small body as well as a large one. Then, when the dragon turned up in a small body, the master dared him to climb into his bowl. 
as the little dragon had a big temper and much ignorance. He jumped at the dare, but when he tried to jump out again, he couldn't do it. The master explained the drama to the dragon, and the dragon then went to rebirth. The dragon may have been constantly in somebody, but he had not destroyed his ignorance and therefore lost his temper. I'll show you, he said, I'll change my body into a little one right now. If he had really been in somebody, he would have said, you say I can't appear in a small body. Okay, so what? I just appear in this large one. But he lost his concentration and was turned caught and defeated by the great master. Still, Naga Samadhi is an inconceivable state. How do dragons get to be dragons? They study the Buddha drama with mighty effort, morning to night, but they do not keep the precepts. Precepts are for common people. They say, I am extraordinary, I am not the same category as they are, and I do not have to keep precepts. That's how they turn into dragons. Sutra Note The transformation of consciousness into wisdom has been described. The teaching says, The first five consciousnesses turned become the perfecting wisdom. The sixth consciousness turned becomes the wonderfully observing wisdom. The seventh consciousness turned becomes the wisdom of equal nature. The eighth consciousness turned becomes the wisdom of the great perfect mirror. Although the sixth and seventh are turned in the cause and the first five and the eighth in the effect, it is merely the names which turn, their substance does not turn. Commentary the above passage was not part of the original text but was added later. Sutra Instantly enlightened to the nature of wisdom, Chu Tung submitted the following verse Three bodies are my basic substance, four wisdoms, my original bright mind. Body and wisdom in an abstracted fusion, in response to beings, I accordingly take form. Arising to cultivate the misfalls movement, holding to or pondering over them a waste of effort through the master, I know the wonderful principle and in the end I lose the stain of names. Commentary Chu Tung understood the function of the three bodies and the four wisdoms. The three bodies are not to be found outside my own body, he said. And the four wisdoms, too, are produced from my own bright understanding mind. When the bodies and wisdoms interpenetrate, then I may dispense the Dharma in accord with the needs of living beings, in accord with external conditions and yet not changing, unchanging and yet in accord with conditions. If you wonder, how can I cultivate the three bodies and four wisdoms? That is nothing but false thinking, false movement. The same is true of holding to them and being attached to them. From beginning to end, there is no stain of names. What is unstained by names is the original self-nature, which is untouched by worldly emotion. Unless you have no defilement, you cannot return to the root and go back to the source which is undefined. <laughs>